Good morning, family and friends, and welcome back to Cooking with Carol Diane. This morning, I'm going to be creating uh, what I call a uh, masterpiece creation for uh, Easter in just a couple of days. And I wanted to do kind of a funny this morning to show you that um, you can think of your kitchen as something besides just a kitchen. Um, I happen to be an artist, if you don't know. Uh, you can check me out on my watercolors that I do on thegardenersglove.com. And what I'd like to kind of have you do is think of your kitchen as an art room. And what does an art room have for an artist? Well, we have an artist palette, and that's why I put this funny little one together today. But the artist palette in, in the kitchen, it, if you're considering it like your art room, so your artist palette is your counters and your stove and uh, oven that you're gonna be using. What are the supplies that I use in my art room? Well, I use brushes, um, whereas, and different tools of kinds, um, whereas you may have um, a whisk or a spatula, measuring cups and measuring spoons. What else do I have to start um, a masterpiece? either a canvas if I'm doing acrylics or in my case watercolor paper and I use uh, a high quality watercolor paper, I really do. In your kitchen, your ingredients are food, <laughs> spices, uh, maybe some food coloring to spice up things and make it look pretty. So then you have to start with an idea, and that's what I'm doing today, is I'm starting with an idea to make a recipe. Um, this is something in your brain. Uh, so get out your creative skills, and once you have created something, then like all artists, um, you're kind of critical, or all artists are critical of their work. However, when you stand back and look at what you've just created, um, you admire it, of course, but then you want to share and you want to share it with friends, family, you know, a neighbor, something. So let's get busy and make today my little masterpiece for Easter dessert and just say, call it Bon Appetit <laughs> when I get it all done. I hope it comes out. I hope everybody likes it for Easter. So I'm going to clear my counter now and begin my master creation, my style of my Easter dessert. Hope you'll join me, hope you'll stick around. Okay, my counter is all cleared off and I'm ready to bake a cake. Not just any cake though. I hope you stay with me clear to the end of what I'm gonna do to this cake. So very simple to put together just a few little things on the cake. I'm gonna start with two cups of cake flour, and remember the cake flour looks like this in a box. It's different than your regular flour, your all-purpose flour, it's cake flour. And I always use Swans Down. Uh, if you have a different brand where you come from, go ahead and use that, but that's what's in Colorado and what I've used pretty much all my life. So that's what we're going to use today. And we need to sift the dry ingredients, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the um, cake flour into my sifter. Got my Easter bunny um, apron on. I'm all ready for Easter, kind of, sort of. And I like funny little things to help me bake in the kitchen. Just kind of sets the mood for um, the event. So when I use my little carrot whisk <laughs> or my measuring cups or spoons, it's Easter. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay, so that's the first thing is the cake flour. Now we're going to add one teaspoon of salt. So I'll get my little bunnies here of one teaspoon. Gosh, I might have to put on my reading glasses for this. <laughs> one teaspoon of salt. There we go. Stick that in there. And then we may need some baking powder, and we need two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Yeah, two and a half. So we'll go one. Kind of hard to do with these little ears. No, 
I'll get him in there. One. I just thought these were so cute and festive for the holiday. And here's my half. Two and a half teaspoons of the baking powder. <clears throat> Sift that together and any sifter that you have, if you have the kind that shakes like that, that's fine too. I just prefer my vintage one over any other, I really do. I just like it, always have. And there it is. Now, we're going to set this aside. Now we're gonna try some wet ingredients. And for the wet ingredients, you're going to need um, one cup of milk and you need to have it at room temperature. There's about four different things at room temperature. The milk, your eggs, butter, and some sour cream at room temperature. Go ahead and set your oven for 340 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the milk in here. And then I'm going to get the uh, sour cream. So that's one cup of milk and uh, the sour cream is a half of a cup right here in my bunny. My little bunny. <laughs> He's my helper, my thumper helper. Going back to my thumper. So I did a watercolor um, rabbit and uh, it did come out pretty good. And I uh, posted it on Facebook and apparently my sister fell in love with it and wanted it so bad. So I mailed it to her. As a surprise, she didn't even know it was coming. I sent it to her, and uh, but I told her, I said, you know, if you really want it, you have to frame it, <laughs> mat and frame it. And she finally got around to doing that and putting it on a, a nice background of a white frame and an easel and took a picture of it and everything. And I was really pleased. So we call that bunny thumper. We really do. Okay, milk, sour cream, and some vanilla, always have to have a little flavoring here. Uh, let me see, I haven't made this particular cake, so I want to make sure, yes, I have all the right ingredients. And for the vanilla, two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of, I'm gonna be using my Madagascar vanilla, because I want this cake to be pretty special. I'm having company come um, besides my family. And I want everything this year to taste really special. So what did I say? One, two. One, two teaspoons of nice vanilla. Go ahead and give that a whisk. Make sure it's all incorporated. And like I said, your milk, your sour cream, and butter and eggs all should be at room temperature. So I did that before I even started this video. All out. Okay, now you want to set that aside. Now go to your mixer, hand mixer, uh, the tabletop, whatever you want. And if you're using the um, KitchenAid mixer, go ahead and put a paddle um, in here of doing for this. And you're going to need four egg whites, and you're going to need two sticks of butter, and you're going to need um, one and a quarter cup of just household all-purpose sugar. So I'm gonna start with my butter first of all, and get it into the, and it's nice and soft, and get that going into the mixer to begin with. Finally have a gorgeous day out it snowed, all of that melted. Temperature dropped to 26 at night, but got through all of that. And now we're up to, uh, oh, 66 degrees right now. So that's gorgeous, real nice outside. I have a couple errands I want to do today after I get this cake all finished, but it's gonna take me a little while on this particular cake because it's no ordinary cake. <laughs> Nope, no ordinary cake for me. 
I usually make, and last year I did, and showed you how to do that. I usually make a nice um, coconut cake for um, Easter. I like, uh, I like coconut, but um, this year, totally something different. And that's kind of what I was after, is to create something, a masterpiece, something very, 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 very different. Okay, so the butter is in here. And now we're gonna go ahead with, um, actually, I'll go ahead with the sugar. I'm gonna turn my mixer on and get this going. And I'm gonna turn it to the next notch, which is a number four. I'm gonna turn it to that so that uh, it gets going in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna separate my, or one of them anyway. Separate and get these egg whites going. However, you want to do these eggs one at a time. This is another cake very much like a um, angel food cake. Give it up just a little bit, get that sugar in that butter. And I always like with me, I like to wipe down the sides of my mixer, making sure all that's in there good. Now, rule of thumb is to do this for hmm, a good uh, four minutes, three to four minutes of mixing butter and sugar. It's not that graininess. I got my little sticker finally came in the mail. It says, um, Life is what you bake it. <laughs> I thought my mixer was so bright in here that if it's a bright, bright red, then I thought, let's tone this down just a little bit with something. So I got that little sticker on there. Some of them are flowers or whatever you want to put on there. And now I've noticed that there is a, a real pretty um, colorful um, band that you can put on this area that I may order. I don't know. One of them is the... Um, Buffalo plaid, black and white, like this, buffalo plaid. I might order that, I don't know yet. Okay, so now, and now I'm going to turn it down to the, I'm pretty sure I'm on two. Yeah, I'm on two. And I'm going to add the egg white in here. Here's one. Bump it back up to your four, the next feet up. Get your next egg ready. All of that egg white, you really do. And you think that's pretty well mixed up? Then you go ahead and you add your second egg white. I cleaned house all day yesterday, and I mean deep clean as much as I possibly could. Um, my guests have never been to my house. Family has all the time. But I'm having two very, very special gifts. And I wanted everything to be just right. And so I went around with a fine tooth comb <laughs> and tried to clean up everything I possibly could. My third day. Declutter, put things away. Get it. <laughs> And I'm thinking, ah, they don't want to see that. Get that out of here. Yeah. I think it'll be all right. I really do. Like I said, I get a big kick out of Easter. And uh, I, I don't think this year's any exception. I'm going to stop it just for a minute on this third one and scrape down the side of the bowl because I can see it is getting to the side here. Back up. And now add my final fourth egg white. Okay, so those ingredients are now all in there. Now we're gonna go back to our two bowls here. 
going to grab, actually I'm going to grab mm, probably this size, which is uh, a third of a cup. <laughs> so that I can scoop this out of the flour mixture to kind of put in here a little bit at a time. all incorporated in there and now we'll see if I can do it with these bunny ears we're gonna stick a good half of this into the mixture kind of hard with these bunny ears I'm trying for you I really am and then we're gonna stick half of the milk mixture in here. And then we're going to go back to the flour mixture. Just have to kind of do this in increments. And some more of uh, liquid it all in there more of the flour the rest of the flour can go in here now mixer. Very important that you stop your mixer. Take it out of here. All that little goodie off of the paddle blade. You know, when I used to have my regular mixer, we didn't have any of these whisks. Um, blades we didn't have the paddle thing we didn't have any of this we just had little beaters regular little beaters and everything still came out fine it really did but they really have improved on this baking <clears throat> now you just want to give this a couple of turns and then you're going to stick it in uh already prepared baking dishes of pie pans. And I have gone ahead and greased and floured and put um, parchment paper on the bottom. So I'm going to start with these two here. Equal amounts. And I am doing a third, so I will get it out and put it And equal amounts, you're, you're kind of just guessing. I mean, you certainly can measure it out if you want to. But over the years when you've been cooking, as long as I have, you just kind of know by looking at it. You really do. Okay, so you want to get that down into your pie plan, pan here. All smoothed out nice. Pretty evenly. And you're going to bake the cake part. You're going to bake for about I don't know, 20 to 25 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven. But like I said, you want to set that oven at 340 degrees, which I have done and mine is, is already preheated and ready to go on my oven. So that was pretty simple, wasn't it? Just a couple of little items that you have to follow, you'll have it. 
you'll have it done. Okay, so I will be back on, of course, like I always am, here in just a little while when the cake is out of the oven and it is cooled, thoroughly cooled. Okay, I'm back on. I'm going to be making a filling that goes in my cake, which the cake has 12 more minutes to bake, and then it has to cool completely. And so in that interim, I'm going to be putting a raspberry filling in my cake, on my cake, on the layers. So you need to have um, two cups of uh, frozen raspberries. Now you can get the kind in the package, but that has a lot of juice to it. So what I did with mine is I have the fresh raspberries here, but I did stick them in my freezer. So they are frozen raspberries. So I wanna put two cups of the raspberries in a saucepan. And then I wanna add one and one third cup of regular sugar in here. Let me dry my measuring cup as well as I thought. I cleaned up my kitchen, I really did from just doing the cake. Now we're on to the filling of putting this in here. And you're gonna let this cook for a good eight, 10 minutes in here. Eight to 10 minutes. So that the raspberries start melting. I'm also going to add, um, whoop, I forgot one ingredient here, the water. Uh, one and one half cups of water, which I'll grab real quick. there was something that makes it all melt and get to a syrup stage in eight to ten minutes once it has cooked and you've got it all down where it looks like a syrup nice then you will be adding oh about five to six tablespoons of cornstarch because that's going to thicken it up and then take it off your heat and allow that to completely cool down. So by the time you let your cake cool down and you've let all of this cool down, then I'll come back to my counter and we'll go ahead and ice the cake, put the filling in, and then comes the fun part of decorating this cake for Easter, something completely different. So I'll catch you in a few. Okay, I am back to put the frosting together for my new cake. And, um, pardon me a minute, my throat's a little dry today. The cakes uh, have cooled on my stove top over here, but I wanna get the frosting going. So, what you'll need for the frosting is, you'll need one cup of butter, lots of butter in my recipes, Yep, I go through a lot of butter, I really do. And of course, like everything else at the grocery store, butter has gone up in price. Everything has. Now we're, I hear we're gonna have a shortage of eggs. Maybe I should go buy some real chickens and have them out in my back 40 and have some eggs. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a possibility. <laughs> so I don't run out of eggs. Okay. Butter's definitely at room temperature. I'll get that in there. I have the butter. Okay, and then I'm going to take um, a half of a cup of Crisco shortening, just the regular Crisco shortening. Not the buttered flavored one, just regular. And we're gonna stick that in there. Real nice. And then, I'm gonna go ahead now and add my vanilla, which is one teaspoon. And you know what? I'm just gonna go like that. <laughs> That's my teaspoon. Okay, now I'm gonna put this down and get the butter and the shortening mixed up pretty well. And while that's doing that, I'm going to sift out six cups of con 
conditioner's sugar. That's powdered sugar. It's six cups of that going. I'm just going to use my my regular measure. These are these are cute, but they're a little hard to do with the rabbit ears on them. So there's one. So, it's a big project, I know, but you know what? It only comes around once a year. And like I said, I'm having some pretty special people at my table this year that I, I hope all this comes out. I really do. My um, dinner that I have planned, um, my son's girlfriend, Christina, she texted me the other day and said, uh, what would you like me to bring? You know, I, I can make whatever and help you out. Okay, and I'm all for that. I really am. So, um, I told her, would you like to make the scalloped potatoes? Yeah, she'd do that. And the salad. She wanted to make the salad. Okay. So, then she texts me back in just a few minutes and said, I know, I know, not the box kind of scalloped potatoes. And I said, no, <laughs> not the box kind. This has to be homemade. You get those potatoes out and you start peeling them. And uh, I said, you do know the difference between scallop potatoes and uh, au gratin potatoes, don't you? I said, I don't want cheese in them. This is just regular scallop potatoes. Yeah, yeah, she knew on that. Okay. And uh, I was going to do a um, Waldorf salad. I thought that'd be kind of fun, a fruity salad. But she said she wanted to do the salad. So I said, okay, whatever you want to create. Remember, it's all about creating. And uh, so I'm not sure what it's gonna be. She didn't even know what it was called. She just said um, that it had fruit in it and whipped cream. And I said, well, then let's just call it a spring fruit salad. Yep, that was fine with her. I said, okay, that's what it's gonna be. Spring fruit salad. And uh, along with, uh, I think I'll put my daughter-in-law in charge of um, those mini carrot stuffed peppers. I think that would be nice this year. And um, I've already got the spiral ham I have to do and the rack of lamb. And I have to do the sauteed beans. And I may put together the deviled eggs. Everybody seems to like my deviled eggs. And um, then, of course, uh, oh, I'm going to be doing the Easter bunny rolls, diddle rolls. And my creation of this particular cake. So, let's begin. Let's begin by sticking some of this in here. And I guess I'll go back to this part of it. See if I can get some of this started with this. I'm gonna have to grab my smaller one. Which I think I will. Hang on a second. Sometimes 
because big things are just that, just too big. And I don't want to do that. This in here. I'll keep it on low. It's a lot of powdered sugar. Really, really is. So you just want to kind of get it in here in little increments because it is mixing with that um, butter and Crisco. And I will have to grab a little bit of milk. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go again. Now we're going to add just a little bit of milk. And I'm going to be doing this periodically as I add more of this nice powdered sugar. We want quite a bit of frosting because I've done a three layer cake today. And you always need just a little bit more frosting available when you're doing, putting that many cakes together. My filling of my raspberry filling is all nice and cool and ready to go in the middle of this cake on the layers anyway. Now if I had had my homegrown raspberries from where I used to live, oh my gosh, it would have been a lot tastier and a lot, lot sweeter. But you know, I just had to settle for the ones at the grocery store. And um, it's all right. It's just I wish they had been my my particular raspberries. They were so good. This year, I've noticed that my raspberry bushes are starting to get the green leaves on it for spring. That'll be great. And once I live down here for several more years, if that happens. <laughs> They will multiply because raspberry bushes do. And that, I can't wait to look forward to that because uh, then I can start making my jam again. And just going out and getting a fresh raspberry, picking them. Raspberry, not raspberry. Raspberry. There I go again, say the stupid things I'm on now. <laughs> Catching myself a little bit more though, if you notice. Trying to catch myself just a little bit more. Okay, we'll see if that's enough. We'll see, we'll see. Just dump my tea all over the counter. That wasn't too good. It'll be one of those days today, I think. Okay, we want to add just a little bit at a time on this. Just a bit of clean up that mess right quick. You know, if you were sitting here at my bar watching me, maybe you'd be laughing your head off. I don't know. Maybe you are now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but when tea goes all over your counter and down onto the floor, yeah, I kind of have to stop and go clean it up. Okay, so I whipped this really nice. I like what it's doing right now, but now I have to add the coloring. And so what I'm doing for my little cake is I want to get it as close as I can to what's called Robin, Robin's Egg, which is this color right here of the egg that I did. Not the ceramic blue of this dark blue, but, but just a really light, light color. So, and to do that, I'm going to start with some uh, coloring, um, icing coloring through Wilton that is the teal. I had to order this because down where I live, there are no, um, there are no um, kitchen shops down here. So I'm gonna take about that much and stick it in the frosting here. Turn on my mixer. I want to add now some sky blue coloring. I hope I get it as close to my robin's egg. This is just 
like I said, trial and error, mostly. Just kind of dip it down there in your, in your frosting. when I'm mixing my watercolors of my watercolor paint. I, I'm like that too. You know, I've got my great big um, nice palette that I'm, I'm mixing. It's not really a palette. It's just a, um, it's a watercolor palette, but um, they have little deep wells to them and I'm mixing away on the colors. And every now and then I just have to take a little bit here and a little bit there to get just the right color of what I want. fairly close to what I'm after. It doesn't look too bad. It's pretty hard to get it um, exact of what I want. Pretty, pretty hard. It really is. Mix this up. But I think... Get that down in the bottom where it still looks the white. Because I don't want a marble look to it. I think I may go with this. I think that might look okay. Which is just, you know, kind of real pretty. Not dark like this. Now, when I did these, these were um, craft eggs not hard boiled eggs. And I did them with um, pretty much this. I, I did use it, which was harder to do than a regular food coloring dye that you get for eggs. Um, I really had to soak these a couple of times and then I um, speckled them. But I think, I think this might be okay for what I'm using today. I could go a little bit more with the blue like I said, it's kind of hard to know. We'll try a little tiny bit more with the blue. Let's see if I can't get it. A little away from the green and more with the blue. You know my other mixer that I had, the white one that I gave away? I kind of wish I hadn't now because uh, I never had to do this push thing on it. It was different. You just kind of set it in there and it was ready. Let's go to sky blue. So I don't want to take very much of this at all. Stick that down in there. And see what color that gives me. trial and error anytime you're making something to know what you want as far as all these colors and that's that's what I want right there okay so now I'm gonna get this heavy mixer out of the way I did have to bring out my um, my cake stand that is the turntable for this project Which, if you don't have one, it's okay. You can still put this cake together. It's just so much easier to use a turntable to do this. And I'll go ahead and just put it in this bowl. Getting the big one out of the way. And this big bowl out of the way. Yeah. 
That way I can see it a lot better in there. And if I want to add more color or whatever I want to do, at least it's right here and I can do it. Okay. <laughs> now on to grabbing my cakes and getting them onto my stand. So let me go grab them. Okay, another step to making this little cake. So let's take the first cake and because it's raised just a little bit on the top, we don't want that. So I'm gonna take, well, I thought this knife would do it, but let me grab my other one here that I like just a little bit better because it's longer that I can go quickly clear across the cake. So again, I've showed you this before, take any knife that's gonna take it all the way across your cake. And just remove that and get rid of that top piece. Get rid of that. Now I am going to put down um, these little guys that you can buy because I'm going to be removing this and putting on a nice Easter cake plate. And so I don't want, I don't want that on there. So I've removed it. I'm gonna remove the parchment paper off of it. And I'm gonna stick the cake right here. Okay, that's the first one. Yay, we got that far. <laughs> yep, we got that far. Okay, now I'm going to take some of this nice icing, the frosting. And we'll put some on here on the bottom part here. I also went and grabbed my filling of what I'm doing. And see why I say it's nice to have the turntable of your cake stand because it goes on so much better. You don't have to keep turning and turning and turning on your cake plate. I got all this on here. Now when I get this a little bit done here, I'm going to be sticking it back in the refrigerator before I go on to the next step because I want to make sure that this is nice and chilled. Now for this part of the filling, so it's done as far as it cooked and it's set up and it's cooled, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna pour some in a bowl in a little sieve here because I want to get out a little bit more of the chunks of the raspberries. And um, hopefully this little sieve will do that, that I just wanna, just kinda want it creamy, I really do. Let's see if my sieve on this is Big enough to do this. May not be. Yeah, it may not be. Another way that you could get those little seeds, of course, out of here is to um, put it for, through a food processor. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with it. That's kind of a lot more work than what it's worth, isn't it? Well, again, you have to try these things. <laughs> you really do. So let's take some of the filling now and stick it on here. Onto the, don't worry about your frosting. I said, this is all gonna go in the refrigerator to completely set and cool once I, um, once I get it all on here. I hope they like my little filling on my stuff here. I was going to do this on Saturday tomorrow, but I have other things I wanna do and my oldest boy is coming with his wife and you know, I just didn't wanna be in the kitchen all day. Tomorrow, I really didn't. Okay, so that's that part. Now we'll go to cake number two, which is this one. 
And if you don't want to do the three layers, then go ahead and just do two of your cake. It'll, it'll be all right. But I happen to be doing the three. Brush off any remaining little crumbs. Take it out of the pan. Again, get your parchment paper off of there. Turn it over and set the next one on. Now, I'll see if I even want to use a third one. It might be pretty high, so I may just go with two. I really may just go with two. Mainly because the pretty little um, <laughs> cake plate that I'm putting this on has a lid to it. And uh, I want it all to fit, I really do. I want it all to fit. See, he slides. That's why um, I may go ahead and put this in the refrigerator. Yeah, I may. I may go ahead and let it sit in the refrigerator just to have this icing stick. Couple little issues, but I took care of them. <laughs> I went ahead and put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for quite a little while. And then I finished icing the cake. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called speckling. Um, and I use this method with my watercolors. I really do on different projects that I do. So you're going to need to take, I'll show you the ingredients here. You're going to need to take some Hershey's cocoa, uh, just a tablespoon of that. And then um, you mix that with a little hot water, a hot water here. That mixed in real nice sometimes best plans I mean I'm working as hard as I can folks on this Easter dinner and I have a thousand of things going through my mind and this cake probably I shouldn't have started such a big project <laughs> for Easter but I did Okay, now I'm gonna add just um, a little bit of my Madagascar vanilla to this. I also want to add um, some rum flavoring. <laughs> Put that down in there where I can get it open. If I had rum in the house, I would be putting that, but I do have rum extract. And it's gonna give it just a little bit of a flavoring here. Not much, but a little. Now, this is a messy process, but one in which when I did the eggs here, which I did do them, I uh, uh, speckled them. It's called the splatter effect. You're going to take the paintbrush and you're going to go just like this on the cake. And well, let's hope it works. I don't know. You're going to need it where nothing else gets in the way. So move everything else out of the way and I'll try to keep it pretty contained here. Um, and the best, best way to do this when I was doing it with the eggs, of course I did it in the sink, but I'm not gonna put the cake in the sink, is to try it out. Just try it out on your counter. Just speckle it and try it out on your counter. So I'm gonna go just like this on the cake. And I don't care if I have a few little clumps on it. That's okay. I'll show you here. I'll get some of those bigger ones off on the counter. Not too bad. I'm just going to go kind of along like this on the cake. I usually do mine even on my art paper. I will start. <laughs> And I will do it down on the paper first, uh, you know, on a separate piece of paper, just to make sure it comes out. Now, a lot of times I'm not using a great big brush like this with my artwork. Uh, sometimes I have, but I will do it with a toothbrush. And it comes out just fine. I want some speckles on top. Doesn't matter if you have some bigger ones. I think it gets the character when you do. 
Just kind of go around your cake and make sure you've covered all areas. And this is gonna go right back in the refrigerator to get cool again. So let me put that back while I do the top part. Okay, am I done with this cake yet? Nope, I'm not. <laughs> not at all. Got it back out of the refrigerator from cooling of having it speckled. Now I'm gonna put my cake on a pretty stand. And that's gonna go on this one. Isn't it gorgeous? Little bunny rabbit with the carrot. And I think it's just wonderful. So I'm going to be moving now my cake. Make some room here. Onto that. And I wanna be sure and grab underneath it. And so what I'm gonna do, just to make sure I grab it, is to take it like this and move it to the cake stand. There we go. Put this out of the way. Now another little cute thing I'm gonna do to my cake is make a drip. And I was going to do it with um, the hot cream and my chocolate. I have to do this for something else. So I'm running out of time right now. Um, it's kind of been a full day doing this cake. So I'm just gonna use these again. And you melt them in the microwave 30 seconds at a time till you get just a drip, kind of like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put mine in a pastry um, bag. I had to get out my little tips that I've got. And I'm using a number eight of the Wilton tip. And I'm gonna go ahead and, um, in fact, I'm just gonna do it this way and just see if I can't just pour it in. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's very good. Because I want it even on what I'm doing. So we'll just kind of pour this in here. Don't think I'll need all of it here. Until it's in the back, okay? Now I'm gonna take it with the cake. Clean up my mess a little bit. <laughs> and because it is still warm, um, I'm gonna do this pretty fast here, but I'm gonna start on this end. And I just want to make it come down. And I'm doing this, of course, backwards. I didn't want to do this on the cake um, turntable um, because I want to show the drips on this. And we'll see how that's going to look. Of what I want here. Yep, not too bad. Okay, then I'm going to take the rest of it and put on top. You can add more in areas that you don't think you have. That's my little, pretty much a ganache. Um, topping, but instead of with the cream, I'm just going with this chocolate. And I'm not done yet. This is just this part of it that I, um, grab some more Still have to make a top. Use as much or as little as you want. But I wanna get it all on here. And then when I go to my next step, I said we'll go ahead and put this back in the refrigerator to let this cool and set. Now on to the top. All right, on to the last part of making this cake of this masterpiece creation. 
Um, this is going to be a little nest because I love birds. It's spring. There's robins out there that I see. Um, and keeping with my little speckled eggs that I did here of the robins, um, robin egg color. So I took the chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate bar, and really, it's just a chocolate bar. You just break up, put in your microwave, 30 separate increments. I only did that twice, and I have a real nice, soft, real nice, soft little um, chocolate. Melted it. Okay, so now you're gonna think this is crazy, but we have to make the nest. So we're gonna spray. And I'm always missing an item, I really am. Here we go. We're gonna spray this bowl with a little bit of cooking spray. And then we're going to add some saran wrap to the bowl. Because I need to get my nest out of here once it's in here. So I'm gonna put it like that. And then we're going to spray this a little bit. And then we're going to take um, these, um, <laughs> what is called vermicelli. I know I'm uh, pronouncing it incorrectly, but this is what they look like. They are a Chinese noodle that you get in the Asian food section of your grocery store. And so we're going to take this. They're very, very thin little noodles here. And we're going to break them apart. I'm going to try to break them apart. Might have to do that with the scissors, maybe. And we're going to break them apart. And I'm going to be putting this down in this chocolate. Uh, to form my nest. That's just breaking too. I've never used these. I've never made this recipe, but I thought it would be fun to do for um, Easter of making a bird's nest. Might look a little messy. Some of it is a little messy. Who cares? It's all gonna clean up. Now, when you get to that speckled area of making this cake, you can either line your whole area like with newspapers, set it up that way if you want to, because um, it does splatter, but it's just the cocoa and the vanilla. I mean, it's going to come off of any surface. It really is, so don't worry about that. It'll come off. This part, I don't know. <laughs> really? I don't know. <laughs> Lance and Sam, I hope you appreciate all this <laughs> hard work. And it's not just because I'm having extra company. It's not that. Because I, I would do this for my own family. Trust me, I would. Ask them. I've done some pretty crazy things on different events. Okay, we just want to get this really coated with this chocolate. And you're going to be sticking this also in the refrigerator uh, to set up nice because it's got to get cool and set up. But you want to get the this stuff coated where it looks like a looks like the bird's nest, and it's coming together. It really is. So let's put it in. Start forming it. Putting it in the bowl now. Getting it all down in there. Yes, it's a mess, but it won't be. It'll be just fine. Depending on how, this is gonna go on top of the cake. Yep. As the decoration for the nice um, robin egg, or robin's egg speckled cake. I think I'll just call it that. Robin egg speckled cake. All right, so that's that part of it. <laughs> that's that part of it. My hand's a little bit here where I can work. Now, 
you would take um, another piece of saran wrap. Messy projects, but you know what? Who cares? They're fun. Fun little projects. Not as time consuming as when I did the Easter, um, my sugar eggs. And I'll spray one side, put this down in the bowl, and then I'm gonna set this bowl down in here so that I can make sure it is gonna come out looking like a nest. And it will. <laughs> so I'm gonna not freeze it, but I am going to get it really cold and then I'll be back. I'm back for the final finale. Okay, so what I did was I reheated just a little bit more of this to go on top, just for the bird's nest to stick to it. That's all I want, just for it to stick. And put it in the refrigerator and or freezer, whichever you wanna do. I'm gonna take it off of this now, off of the um, plastic here. Chocolate's chocolate, you know, once you get it cold, then it comes, it sticks and it comes off pretty easily. So there's the little bird's nest. Right there. I'll put him right like that. And then on this, never do this at, right after you get your nails fixed. <laughs> right now, because it kind of gets all underneath them, but that's okay. Okay, what to put in this? So I went down and I got um, the mini robin eggs. And I got the, um, these are the chocolate ones of the milk chocolate little eggs. So let's see which ones I kind of like in my bird nest to give it some color in here. Of which we may have to put just a little bit more of this. I would just kind of drizzle it on here to make the eggs stick in here and stick in here so of course i'm going to start with these and just add the colored eggs these are kind of different of these eggs they really are now if i had wanted to put the great big ones on here which i certainly could certainly certainly could could have put them on first of setting one right here and grab another one here. Let's give him a little, little bit down here so that he sticks onto the egg. And then, like I said, you're just going to kind of fill this with these little eggs, whichever ones you want. I really like these light blue ones because they go kind of with the speckled part up here. And we're just gonna, we're gonna stick that in, right in there. And that is my Easter Robin's Egg speckled cake that I'm gonna put back in the refrigerator now. Always something with dogs, always, always, always. I wonder if I can get through any video without my little puppies uh, barking about something. Even when I put them outside, you're gonna be able to hear them. <laughs> you really are. Anyway, I want to wish everyone a very happy Easter. Go make yourself something nice and fun. This is my little masterpiece. However it turned out, it turned out. I hope they all enjoy my dinner and my cakes. So from my kitchen to yours, this is Cooking with Carol Diane. Again, happy Easter.